Hi lovelies and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Amy and I am a cruelty-free makeup enthusiast. I have been wanting to film this video for so long now. Today is our March 2020 favorites and fails video. So these are all the things I've been loving, some things I haven't really been loving during the previous month. So let's get started. Now, do we want to start off with the bad? Want to get the bad over first and then we can do the good? I think that's what we should do. So let me start off with the cake. This is the Do Gooder. This is a volumizing dry shampoo. Now before I get into this, I want to say that Cake is a really easily accessible brand now. Um, it is a Canadian brand, but here in the US they're now in Walgreens stores, which is phenomenal. It's so great to see a cruelty-free and vegan brand so easily accessible, especially with hair care, because you don't always see that in drug stores. So I know that I really, really do love their hair masks. Those are fantastic, but this dry shampoo, just like the dry conditioner, I am not a fan of. This just made my hair kind of lackluster. It didn't add anything to it. Instead, it made it more flaky. It kind of made my hair more flat. I didn't see any kind of volume added to my hair or any kind of refreshing. So for that reason, this is a fail and I would definitely never repurchase this ever again. I do have a lot of other dry shampoos that I do like, including Dry Bars and IGK. So moving on, I had a gift card to TJ Maxx like back back in like February or something and I went there and I am on a no buy but if I get gifts and if I get gift cards I could still use those so they had a bunch of pretty vulgar palettes there and I was like you know what I've never tried pretty vulgar and I think their stuff looks so cute so this one I, I mean I just you put a bird on something and I love it so this one is their early bird eyeshadow palette. I love the little birdie on it. Let's see, focus camera, focus. There we go. Do you see how pretty that detail is? It's just so lovely packaging and it's like totally my aesthetic. I love it. So inside it looks like a little birdie cage and then let's focus again. There we go. Those are the shades. Now the shades look super pretty, right? Like a very daytime simple look. This actually reminded me of the Boudoir Eyes palette from Too Faced when they had those really tiny tins and those were so pretty and I remember really liking that palette and that's why I picked this up because it kind of reminded me of that. But guys, there is like no pigment. Like if there was an award given to no pigment palettes, this one would like take the cake. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's the pro Like I'm going to try it a couple more times, but honestly, like it's not terrible when you initially just dig your fingers in. Okay. So do you see those? There's like those top two rows barely have any pigment. It's really the bottom ones that do. So I'm just struggling. Maybe it's me. Maybe I will come to like it. I just have to give it other tries, maybe applying it in different ways. Does anyone like this palette and do they love it? Can you tell me some tricks? I don't know if it's just old because I did get it on like the super sale section of TJ Maxx where I think I got it for like $4.99. Uh, those are my feelings on that. I'm going to hold on to it for a little while longer just to see if maybe I change my feelings about it, but right now it's a dud. Next, I want to talk about two blushes, and these aren't new blushes in my collection. Interestingly enough, they were ones that I took out to play with, and then I realized how they've changed in a way or not performing to how I want them to perform. The first one is this Elate Cosmetics. This is the Universal Cream in the shade Bliss. This is a really pretty peachy shade and it is a cream blush and you could really use it any way you like on your lips, on your cheeks, on your eyes and I used to dip into it a lot and all of a sudden it just got really really dry and I have to say I have to, it also spins in there too, which is kind of frustrating, but when I dig my finger in, there's like not much comes off. There's like nothing there. Like I really have to work at it and to like warm it up. And honestly, I don't like having to work that hard for my cream products. So I don't remember it being this difficult to work with. So I don't know. I've only had it for a couple months. I can't imagine it going bad. It says it's supposed to be good for 24 months. So I'm a little disappointed. I'm going to pass it on and actually declutter this. I'm going to save it for like when I do a declutter. I'll just do a video with a couple of things that I want to get rid of. 
The second blush that I'm not too crazy about, this is the Milani Berry Rays. This is their Color Harmony Blush Palette. They came out with these Ray blush palettes about like a year ago. And Milani Baked Blushes are phenomenal. Like, I love that formula that they have. Luminoso, again, is such a tried and true, beautiful, peachy blush. But this thing, though, you think that you would get a nice berry color out of this, and you don't. And it's funny, I always struggled with this blush, but I kind of just put it to, oh, you know, it's fine. I, I want a berry blush. I want to hold on to it just for if I ever want to do a video with like all berry colors. But I was watching 90s Love Child the other day, and she was talking about how she struggles with these a lot, that they're so hardly pressed, and it's so true. You have to like dig your brush into this thing to get any pigment to come off and honestly it's just it's just not worth the struggle come on focus so you could see the color come on focus there you go so see you get a little bit off there but it's just not worth it so i am going to pass this on now for the stuff that i have been loving in the month of march first off this is totally random, but I've fallen in love with these polar seltzers. This one is the black cherry kind, so it's just a seltzer water with just the tiniest bit of flavor, and there's something so refreshing about it, and if you want to cut back on like a sugar intake and like soda intake, this is a really great option, and I love the taste of this. And then in here, this is my Sand Cloud Rainbow Metal Straws. I actually have three of these, so I have like one in my purse, I have one here in the house, and then when I was at the office before, um, social distancing. I had one in the office as well and it's so great. They come in these little pouches, traveling pouches and a little like kind of pipe cleaner type thing to clean it and I love these little metal straws. They're so cute mm. and so convenient. So if you want to save the planet that's a really good thing to invest in. Now the next topic that I want to talk about for things that I loved in the month of March is actually a book. It's Know My Name by Chanel Miller and my coworker actually let me borrow it and we were doing this kind of thing at work where we were, you know, swapping books and recommending books to one another. We all became friends on Goodreads which is super fun and um, actually after I finished it I gave it back to her so that's why I don't have a physical copy to show you guys but Chanel Miller is actually the woman who was raped by Brock Turner, which was a really big court case that kind of rocked not only America, but uh, the most of the Western world, I feel like. And it was really, really heartbreaking, that whole story, just because it was about a student, a male white student who had so much privilege, and he... It was almost like they put Chanel on trial, and she's the victim, and yet they put her whole life on trial, and not about him. And it was all about how his life had been changed from it, how his life had been ruined from it, and he was an athlete, and it just, it made me so angry. So then when I got this book, you know, at the time she was just going by Jane Doe, so no one knew her name, and I, I found the book to be so powerful because it's really about her. It's about her experience, it's about the strength that it took her to go through the god-awful legal system that we have. They make you jump through hoops if you want to go the legal route, which makes it so understandable why so many victims don't end up pressing charges and, you know, suing someone and going after someone in the legal courts because it takes up so much time. You have to be willing to, at a moment's notice, go to the courthouse. Um, they treat you like you're on trial and they, they scrutinize every little thing about you. But Chanel is so much more than what happened to her. She's really a talented writer, a talented artist. She's very funny. And this book just just ticked so many boxes for me and I highly highly recommend it. Um, I can't see say better things about this book and all I can recommend is that you read it. It really is moving. So let's talk about a household item. This is my bijou candle in Dolly named after the wonderful Dolly Parton. This is the peach and lily candle and oh my god guys it smells like peaches and lily and I love peaches. I love calling people peach 
because <laughs> you're sweet like a peach and it's something that I've done for years like it's a nickname people go peach when they see me so I had to get this one and it does smell like Lily and if you know I actually had a kitty cat who was my best friend her name was Lily she passed away last year quite suddenly and unexpectedly and so this just kind of reminds me of lilies and just springtime with the peonies. Here in Connecticut, peonies come out during May, so it makes me think about summer, and then maybe we'll all be out of the social distancing by May. One could only hope, but this smells so good. It's the perfect balance of fresh and floral, but also sweet and fruity, and it's just so good, and I love the beautiful candles that it comes in. Let me kind of just put this up, and hopefully this focuses. If you could see the lovely detail of these candles. I love Bijou candles. I love the style that these are in, and I want more of them. <sighs> it's just so relaxing. Hmm. Now for makeup. This is my favorite part. So I have a ton of makeup stuff. I have all these eyeshadow palettes. Most of them are bright. These were actually the eyeshadow palettes that I kind of turned to the most and used the most during the month of March. So a lot of these are bright. I have been using the Linda Halberg. This is the Spectral palette. And this is a wonderful take on pastels and brights. It is just a stunning palette. Let me get closer again and hopefully my camera will focus. There you go. So you can see all those lovely shades there. And it's just inspired me to play with so much more color. And honestly, you only need like two. You could do a one shade look, a two shade, three shades. You don't have to dig into every single color in this palette. And I feel just so inspired by it. You can definitely go not as bright if you go into the deeper shade here, this kind of really deep like plummy shade. I love that color. And then what I've been doing a lot is using this pink shade as a blush. And then this green is a really beautiful inner corner highlight. It's so much fun to play with. So I just love the, the blendability and the inspiration that I can get from this palette. It's really, really fantastic. Another bright palette that I have been using is the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon X Color Pop palette. This thing, guys, I can't imagine. I mean, I guess I was going to like it no matter what just because I love Sailor Moon, but I went into it thinking even if I don't like these shades, I'm still going to love this packaging and I'll just hold on to it forever. But my husband gifted this to me last month and it is just lovely neutrals and pastels. Let me see if we focus again. There we go. And I just love playing with this thing. The yellow is so bright and pigmented. And you can really go neutral with these, this top here, the top row. And I've been using this a lot. I love that there is a super shock shadow in this. And that is the Silver Millennium shade. And I love that just to top off or like use in the inner corner highlight. And I just, it's just everything I've ever wanted. I love it. And I've been using it so much. So another bright colorful palette because it's spring and I'm like, bring out the bright colors. This is the Feral palette by Menagerie Cosmetics. And it's funny because this palette was not in like my monthly makeup basket rotation, but I ended up being drawn to this palette so much. I really love feral eyeshadows. I recently did a eyeshadow single look and um, swatches, which I will leave a link. If I can leave a link, I'll put it up in the corner over here, but I love this palette. It's just so beautiful and bright, and I'm always inspired by it, so I'm actually wearing it today. I did um, Canis Lupus in my crease, and then I did kind of like a halo eye. Um, I put Wisteria, this beautiful pink shade in the crease as well. And then I deepened like each corner of the eye with uh, Allium. Allium, this is this beautiful purple shade, which is probably one of the best purples I have in my collection. And then I used Wolfling in the center of the lid. So it's just such an easy palette to work with. Like I find, I find that the colors almost blend themselves. It's very, very easy to work with. So again, love feral eyeshadows. They're probably my top five favorite eyeshadow formula. And again, I just keep gravitating towards this. I don't know what it is, but I love it. And then another eyeshadow palette that I have been loving is actually more of a neutral palette. This is the Night Owl palette from ColourPop. This I actually did have in my monthly rotation. This came out back in the fall when they were doing all the birdie palettes. I think 
was it called Little Birdie or it was like the one the pretty purpley pink one with the peacock feathers on it was like the main release but then they came out with smaller releases that were um exclusives to Ulta and they had this one I got this one and then I got the corally one which is called Birds of Paradise and this one is just such beautiful bronze can you see the metallic in the the owl feathers I love it I'm sad that this isn't available anymore but this is like one of my Oh, I love all my ColourPop palettes, but I've really been loving this one. And because it's bronzy, and I love the shades in here. Let me see. Focus, camera. Come on. There we go. Come on. Focus. That is it right there. And I just love using it. It's so easy to work with. And if I need something, like, really quick, like, if I need to get ready for work really, really quick, five minutes, something simple, this was really um, a perfect palette to go for because the bronzy neutrals, it's just so easy. And it has this wonderful shade called Bird Brain in here. Now let's talk about bronzers and blush. So these I've had in my collection for quite some time. These are the Cover FX Bronzer and Blush Duos. So you get a matte on one side and a shimmer on the other, and these are fantastic. I got these last year, and honestly, these are some of the best bronzers and blushes I have. You will, they're expensive, but honestly, they are totally worth the price. If you can get them on sale, get them on sale. Cover FX has sales all the time, so just sign up for their emails. These just work so well. They blend right onto the skin like butter. So the two blushes I have, I have Pink Dahlia, this one right here, and then I also have my favorite one, which is Soft Peach. And you can really tell, again, if I try to get up, you can tell, oh, you can't even tell I've dipped into these. But anyway, I've dipped into them a lot, and I've been using them a ton. And it's funny because I didn't put these in my monthly rotation, but I kept just getting that gravital pull to them. And then the bronzer, you can tell I've used the bronzer a lot. So let me go in. I love having the matte and the shimmer next to one another. So I do mostly matte and then just a touch of shimmer around the parameters of my face. And these are just so beautiful. If you're looking for a really good solid blush and bronzer formula, these are really, really good options for you. So next, I want to talk about lip products. I didn't wear too many lip products in March just because, again, I'm working from home during everything that's going on while being in quarantine. But there were several ones that I kept on kind of gravitating towards over and over and over again. So I will show you a couple of them. I had a, three liquid lipsticks. So the first one is the Menagerie Velvet Matte Liquid Lipstick. This is in the shade Sedona, which is a beautiful terracotta. And it's just that if I don't know what to wear, I kind of throw this one on. It's such a beautiful shade. And then an oldie but a goodie, and it's still one of my favorite nudes of all time. This is Jeffree Star's Velour Liquid Lipstick in the shade Mannequin. It's just that light nude, and it's just perfect. Like, it's perfect in every way, and this is one of the liquid lipsticks that I just keep going back to and returning to, and I'm surprised I actually haven't used it up, but I'm starting to see the sides a little bit, so I think I actually might be able to pan this. So we have uh, Sedona, and then we have Mannequin. And then lastly for liquid lips, this is the Cloven Hollow Lip Velvet. Again, really good if you want a clean liquid lipstick formula that lasts all day. Cloven Hollow definitely is the company to go for. This is in their shade Sugar Bear, which is a brown nude. I'm actually wearing it today with just a little bit of a lip oil over it. And again, it just goes with everything. So that's it there. Let me get a little bit closer and see if it focus. So there's Sugar Bear right there. So they're kind of, I've been using a lot of more nude shades. Again, just being at home, it's so much easier. For more nudes, I have these Just a Tint. These are the lip crayons from ColourPop. These two I got back in... When was it last year when they released the Going Coconuts collection? That coconut palette's fantastic. But these I got in a set from that, and they're so just creamy and so easy to apply. They just add a, a hint of color, and they don't dry out my lips because I have very, very dry lips. This one's Waikiki, and then this one is Shaka. Alrighty, my friends, that is it for me today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below if you enjoyed this content. Please let me know what your favorites and fails were for the month of March. I always love talking to you guys. I always will respond to your comments, so please remember to do so. And until next time, remember to stay compassionate and chic.
Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now.